Music Therapy Labs here. What's happening, everybody out there in YouTube land? I am in part three of the studio build, and we have gotten some of the tiling up on the ceiling, as well as obviously already got all the foam up. So my good friend and intern, Nick, is going to pan over that area to show you what it looks like so far. So there have been some revelations while doing this, uh, obviously. You can see up here, here's that foam stuff, right? And some have been commenting and wondering why I'm doing it this way. Why am I not doing like wallboard or homosote is a really good kind of like hard kind of paper wallboard that they use a lot in the Midwest and the East Coast for like basements and stuff because it, unlike chalkboard, which is like what they also call drywall, wallboard made by, by this company homosote is reconstituted paper material. It's pretty expensive per sheet, but it's not that bad. Uh, right now, everything's higher in price now because of certain weird stuff going on in the world. But um, I planned it this way because, for one, I was going to be alone installing all this stuff. I, I wasn't planning to have Nick or anyone help me because right before Christmas, when I was going to have time to do this work, um, I was going to be going to Peru for Christmas. So, so I thought... I better get some really lightweight material that's going to be at least sound deadening enough, but maybe not soundproofing, but it's going to be sound deadening enough to cut down on some of the noise from the tenants above when they're talking or on TV, watching TV or whatever up there. As for the walls left and right of me, so in front of me and that side of me, I might actually put some homosote material up, um, but maybe not. I might not need it because on that side of that wall is our bedroom. And on that side of the wall is our living room. The stereo system and the TV is on the other wall. So there's not a lot of noise coming in from those two sides. Um, the only other problem that could be noise uh, escaping is the hole up here through which the uh, light is going to go. So I already installed that panel. But the light's going to get installed. I'm going to put, you know, some more of this uh, fiberglass and it should be enough to deaden sound. It's not going to be soundproofing, though. As some of you have been talking about with studios, you know, soundproofing is a very big part of it. And as you can tell, there's still quite a bit of reverberation in here because there's a lot of hard surfaces. So, not a great sounding room at all. But once we've got uh, this tile stuff up, um, then we're going to do some sound treatment on both walls, as well as probably even do some kind of a cloud treatment above here, because that's not the ideal perfect kind of reflective surface. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get to putting another one of these tiles up so you can see how it's done. And another thing that my wife actually brought to my attention was, is this stuff fire, you know, retardant or fireproof or, you know, is this a good idea? And actually it's not. So then what I ended up doing is I ended up uh, buying this... Um, this fire retardant type of foam here, fire block, right? And this will also add to some of the, uh, the sound proofing, or I guess sound deadening that we're gonna get from these tiles. A little bit of a mess over there. Uh, definitely you might wanna actually wear some eye protection when you're working with this stuff because it's, um, it's toxic, but it's not super toxic. So the smell's not super bad, but you can notice I have a, a gallon of this acetone, which is the same as what gals use for their nails when they're, you know, taking the nail polish off. That's the only stuff that'll clean this off of anything. And if you don't get it quick, it'll dry onto you. Like, I didn't get that quickly enough and it dried onto me. And you can maybe peel it off, but man, it's, it's a pain in the butt. It's like super glue. And yesterday, as a matter of fact, when Nick was here, <laughs> the whole day was a wash because I had one of these things that I was putting up and I was trying to do two things at once moving one of these poles at the same time as holding this and it just slipped out of my hand like that and it was full of this foam and it just went like that onto the carpet over there and as you can see Nick if you wand over to the, uh, the carpet there you can't see the spot that's because I was scrubbing it with acetone <laughs> to get it out of the carpet and thank god it came out man but the whole day was wasted and outside of the excellent lunch we had at Sauced barbecue place in Pleasanton no in Livermore Livermore um, outside of that, that day was a sucky, sucky day. But today is a much better day. We've got, you know, we've got our fire block stuff here ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and shoot some on here. And I can't use gloves, by the way. I probably would want to use gloves. But the technique I came up with is to hold the panels in place with these, like, little kind of 
plastic wall hold. It's hard to explain what these are for, but anyway. They're perfect for holding the tile up until I get them taped in with the blue tape. And as you can see at this one by the light here, the blue tape holds it in place, but it's such light material that that's enough. Once it dries, and it dries fairly quickly, within 15-20 minutes it's dry, um, I can pull the tape off and then move on to the next section, right? So that's what we're going to do over here. But um, yeah, this is what, what I decided would work for my particular scenario, considering I thought I was going to have to do this all by myself during the, the winter break, right? It looks almost like, like, uh, almost looks like Cheetos or something, huh, there? I wonder, I wonder if it tastes good. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is probably how they make Cheetos. That's my, that's my theory. I'd have to test that theory later. Anyway, so, um, yeah, just fill it in. A lot of fun there. Nick just really has a lot of fun with these glitter eggs. <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> and you know, it is kind of overkill maybe, but makes my wife feel a little bit more comfortable that I'm not underneath a hanging uh, wall of, of you know molten plastic if there's a fire in here, but I doubt that's going to happen, but, you know, better to have something somewhat fire retardant than not at all, right? Almost out. Alright, and just so you guys could see, I wanted to show you the fire retardedness of this stuff by seeing if this stuff will light on fire. So I grabbed a piece of it and just, you know, waving a little flame at it. Oh, it does catch on fire a little bit. Look at that. But it's supposed to be fire retardant. So I don't know how fire retardant it is, but obviously it doesn't just catch on fire. So that's kind of good. Um, just wanted to show that real quick. And then let's continue. Put this up there. Hopefully I don't drop this one too, Nick. Otherwise I'm going to blame it on you this time. Okay. And as I mentioned before, you know, ideally you'd want probably wallboard or something instead of this. It's probably easier to deal with, but so I also mentioned I was going to have to do this by myself, and there's just no way I'd be able to do this, even with these little colder dealies. No way I'd be able to do this all by myself. See how it's falling down already? There we go. Let me get it in place there. Get this one. Put that one over there. Put that one over here. There we go. This one over here. There we go. So that holds it in place enough so I can just check the gaps. Like here, it's a little too gappy, so I gotta pull it over that way. So. Just use the tape to hold it together. You can even take this tape off there because that's already dry. You don't have to be too close, Nick. 
back out a little bit. And I'm wearing safety glasses too, just in case when I'm squirting that stuff, if it would squirt up at me or whatever, I don't want to get blinded, right? So safety glasses are always good to wear when you're doing this kind of stuff. Here I kind of do like a T so it holds it. In the previous video, we were just mounting that foam stuff, right? This is a lot more time consuming. And you can buy these tiles in like two by four pieces, but they were way more expensive. I don't know why these ones were on sale and I got them at like a super discount. So that's part of the reason I went with these. Nope, we need that. All right, so that's basically it for the tile. So um, another, another thing I noticed, if you wand over to some of these tiles that are kind of bubbly, you see that one up above there, Nick? That I found out I put, put way too much of the foam. And obviously it was like pushing it out in spots. Here I didn't do as much, so it's gonna look more smooth like this. So that's a lesson learned, not having done this before and just kind of come up with this uh, process myself using this material. Um, but that's basically the tiling part of this. Uh, let me maybe just do one more. Let me back up over to there, Nick. Let me just maybe do one more of these. Well, maybe it might take too long, but you know, I did want to test the, the flavor of the stuff. It's not too bad. Hmm. What do you think? Pretty good? Hmm. Yeah, here's a little piece over here too. Hmm. I'm going to have some more. Hmm. Mm, yeah, mm. wow, it's not just acoustic ceiling, not only is it fire blocking, but it's kind of tasty. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> After yesterday's debacle, I had to come up with some funny thing. That was just some cheese balls <laughs> and some uh, easy cheesy or cheese whiz kind of stuff. <laughs> 